Hey there, it's Grace with Valley Martial Arts Supply and welcome to Black Belt TV's Product Profiles. And here's our host, Raphael Cochet. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> okay, welcome folks back to this segment of uh, Black Belt TV's Product Profiles. Today we're going to cover a checklist on, that you can take with you to purchase a sword. Now I came up with a 14 point checklist. This is downloadable for free from our website, valleymartialarts.com. So if you bear with me, I'm going to go point by point through this checklist to help you go through it. Now, you should already know from watching the segments that you need to avoid things like stainless steel swords. That's a bad idea because stainless steel is too rigid and it could break and they're just not safe at all. And you want to avoid floppy swords. Floppy swords, again, are too dangerous. They flop all over the place and you're not going to get any realism out of that. So avoid stainless steel and avoid floppy. They're bad. Those are a bad idea. Check with your instructor and make sure that it gives you some advice in this area. Now, let's start with the beginning. Number one, what kind of steel is? You want to use a good quality steel. Again, you want to avoid something that's too floppy. This is good for decorative or operatic type of uh, movements, but that's about it. Something that is too hard, like stainless steel, what makes it so dangerous is if you're actually chopping on something. Now, if you think about the, the, uh, the physics of this. If you're actually going to cut against something and this sword is too hard and it snaps, when it breaks, this blade is going to snap back at you and guess what? It's going to stab you in the eye, stab you in the eye. This is actually dangerous. A cheap, hard sword, stainless steel, is actually dangerous to the user. They should almost be illegal. They're good for decorative items, but that's about it. Okay, point number two. What kind of tempering has it had? For a good high quality sword, you want to have dual tempering. Now you might not be able to see on this blade, but you have two tempers. You have the soft back, which allows for the toughness, and you have a hard edge that allows for it to be sharpened. So that gives you a dual temper. In this segment on metallurgy, we covered that in a lot more detail. Right now I'm just going through the points of what you need to have on your checklist. Number three, is the sword too floppy or hard? Again, floppy, bad too hard, also very bad, because it could snap back and hurt you. Number four, balance point of the sword. This is one of those, again, when you're in a sword, you want to ask, when you're in a sword, you want to ask for a rag. A good sword shop should always have rags handy. If they don't, you know there's a problem. It's also very rude to touch a blade with your fingers. It's extremely rude in a sword society. And also, finger oils are very acidic, and they could cause pitting of the blades, especially in a high carbon steel blade. So always ask for a rag or a tile or whatever. You put it over your hand and then put the blade on top of it and you're going to feel where the balance is. Again, as we covered before, it depends on what you're doing, where you want the balance point of your blade. If it's going to be a finesse sword, like a Tai Chi sword, an Epee, that kind of sword, you want to have it close to the hand. If it's going to be more of a forward momentum type of blade, like a broad sword, you're going to want four to six inches even as much in a medieval sword as far as eight inches ahead of the guard. Okay, now, number five. You want to hold your sword pointing upwards. This is where you're going to check your harmonic vibrations. You take your rag again, and you explain to the sword owner what you're doing so he doesn't freak out and think you're doing something weird. He should know what you're doing. He's take your sword and hit it. And if you feel any annoying vibrations in your hand, put the sword down you don't want it, period. Now, the next one is number six. What you want to do is this is where you start getting for the feel of the sword. Pick up the sword, make sure you have plenty of room, there's nobody around you, and you want to gently start swinging. Now, pick up the tassels in your hand because it'll give you a fake feel for the sword and swing it around and just get a feel for what's going on and make sure that you like the way it fits you. The length and the weight of the handle are going to affect the fit and the feel for you. Okay, number seven, you want to look at your blade and you want to look up and down at the blade and look at the texture and look at the feel, see what is on there. Now one of the things that you want to avoid, and I'm checking my list here to make sure I don't make any mistakes, is there are waves and bumps in the blade. I don't know if you can see them on this one, it's kind of hard to see, I'm going to move it up and down. If you can see some bumps and waves in the blade. Now, if you have an unscrupulous salesperson telling you that's proof of a high quality handmade sword, that's just a flat out lie. 
a machine made sword such as this one will have those bumps and dimples. It does not necessarily mean it's a bad sword, but it is not because of it's handmade. This, for example, is a handmade sword and does not have those bumps at all. But at least you know what kind of salesperson you're dealing with. Okay, number eight. Another thing you want to do is when you hold the sword up, check for straightness. This can be really hard to show, but you don't want a bent blade. You want it to be nice and straight. Look it up and down, flip it around, and make sure the blade is not bent. If it's bent, there's a problem. Now that's it for this segment. There's still quite a bit more that I'm going to cover up in the next segment. But it gives you the top or the first eight points you should remember. And remember, this checklist is for free on our website, valleymartialarts.com. Give us a call if you have any questions. And thanks again for watching Black Belt TV's product profiles.